Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the name of Jesus. I just got done moving a sign because we have so many people here today. We need more parking in the rear, and I had to move our sign out. And it is cold out, but we're happy that you are with us. Grab a cup of hot coffee or hot chocolate and join us for a really good sermon today on Jesus healing the blind beggar. We're going to learn a lot of stuff about how much God loves and cares for us. And we want you to be a part of this too. Remember all the good stuff that's coming up for Easter Holy Week. Look on the online for all those details. Thanks for worshiping with us today. God be with you. Good morning, everybody. Welcome in the name of Jesus. It's still bustling back there. I, if you ever, you should do this. Go around the parking lot this way and then come up the back. We have lost probably five to ten feet of parking just back there. The snow. We, what is, we can't do anything about it. You know, it's, it is what it is. We are working on some things for Easter for that. One of the things I would encourage you to do, and this is weird, but can we? Uh, carpool. carpool. Just some of you, you know, because the difference between 30 years ago and now is that we used to have Carlos of five and six in a family coming in, and now we have onesies and twosies. So if you can kind of carpool or make it fun, we're working on maybe having a shuttle service going from over there, and there'll be some parking in the rear too, and we're going to make sure that people will have get visitor our our. our attendance down there to show people where to park and to, how to get up in the back. So what a great problem to have, right? Yeah, yeah amen, huh? This is, this is so terrific. And let's pray that the sun really comes down and maybe gives us five feet back on the parking lot. We have a couple of things I want to share with you this morning. Number one is we have a sh very, very short voters meeting today to elect someone. We have to have someone who will who will vote for the president and vice president of the Synod, our Lutheran Church Missouri Synod, online. And you're going to have to be available in June. If you're a, if you're a voting member of this congregation, you, you're eligible to be, to be this, this person. Um, it'll be right downstairs, right before Bible class. Literally, it's going to take us less than five minutes to do this. And so, um, and, um, so if you could help us, then we'll have our regular Bible class we're going to be talking about baptism today in our in our in Bible class. It's going to be really good. So uh, just very short meeting afterwards. Um, this is our new web address and new email. So much easier than what we had. We just it's, even if you have the old one email and or the the, the 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 URL for our website, if you have that bookmarked, it'll still direct you to this. But we just wanted to make it easier because it was like G D L C Pequot. But I think now it's glory to EPL.org. And so all that information is there too. I also have my own email address. Please use that one um, so, that, so that I can, if you're a member of our congregation, set my old team, other Gmail address. This one will work better. Um, oh, speaking of which, I always talk about these highlighters. These are Bible highlighters. And if you brought your Bibles today or would like a highlighter, I will give them to you for free. Uh, raise your hand. Anyone need one? Yeah, yeah, we got them. Okay, 
JB, can you hand these out? Or, oh, here, I, I got, that's right, Ken, right. you said you were going, I don't want to get away from Ken, so. So if you want to, uh, disciple, what do the disciples give up for Lent? We're, we're going to talk about resentment, how, how to get over resentment, and I'm going to talk to you why John, uh, the disciple, was resentful. So it's going to be a good service. They go, they go about 35 minutes or so. So um, um, next. We still have time for Easter flowers. I thought we were going to be done, but we're going to get more. If you want to sign up for Easter flowers, they're, I think they're, what, 20 bucks? And they are, there's a, Lynn. They were ordered, but I can still get additional flowers just off the Awesome. Fill it up and go to the backside. I love to have flowers on Easter. I'm, I'm a, I love flowers on Easter, so that, let's fill it up. That's great. Um, oh, one more thing. It is March. It is Food Shelf Month. And if you want to give some donations for Food Shelf, it's over by the box there. I just want to make sure we, we notify that as well. And also we have um, George, and, George Miller and, and Colette are, in, are working with the Food Shelf too. And they, they, take, they like also money donations for that as well. Very good. Um, yeah. New series right after Easter. We're going to have a really, it's going to be a fun series. We're so excited about this. Hey, God, what about? How do you know there is a God? How, how can God be good when there's so much evil and suffering? What's, going, what's heaven and hell going to be like? And do all religions lead to the same God? And how can we be sure? These are, these are really great services. See, the deal is if you bring someone to Easter with you, if I, right, this might be a nice series for people to invite it to come and listen to one or all of them. And we want to be able to, to bring this good message of forgiveness of sins to the whole community. So that's why we're doing this whole series right after Easter. So make sure you bookmark that. Also, there is a whole bunch of cards in the back. And Ken After Church will have them for you. I think I have a few of them up here. No, I don't. They're little cards and they have the Easter Holy Week times for Palm Sunday, Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, and Easter Sunday on them on one side, and the other side has a series. It's a great way, if you want to invite a friend, say, hey, this is our church, can I just give this? It's a business size card, so if you could help us out with that, Ken will have them after church and get it from him. Ken is the tall, good-looking man in the back there, so. You're welcome. <laughs> How about this? Bob Peterson, right back there. I know he wants to be recognized. Bob, there he is. There. Bob. So we have a snowplow service that comes out, but they don't do all the little detail stuff. And, and he comes out and he's shoveling and he's got his little, but this is the coolest thing. It's got a heated cab on this. I just think he likes to drive because it's got a heated cab. But the fact of the matter is, he does this voluntarily as well as being our chairman of our, of our trustees. And so we're really grateful for all of our volunteers who go above and beyond like this, especially with a stupid winter that we're having this year. Next, we have anything else? <laughs> it is a stupid winter, it's done, I'm done with it. <laughs> oh, and I saw another sign of spring. If you follow my Facebook site, you saw my signs of spring. That I had, I had a little gravel in my, in my driveway was one. And that they took the shrink wrap off of some boats on the, at the Lund dealership, and I saw another one today. There is a boat, the, 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 the pontoon boats that put the docks in, it's over there, it was out. That's optimism, let me tell you. So, but it was parked right over there, and I thought, okay, that's another sign of spring, it's out. So anyway, if we have any birthdays or anniversaries or anyone want to share today? Anything? Nothing? Are you sure? All right, why don't we stand up? Let's turn to our neighbor. Let's give everybody a good welcome. Good morning. Good morning. Hey, How are you this morning?
descending. Touch our hearts and bring to birth faith and hope and love unending. Word of Almighty, we revere you. Word made flesh, we long to In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord is light and darkness can't, cannot overcome him. God promises that by his great mercy he will blot out the darkness in our lives. Confess your sins, your darkness to your Father, and receive his grace. Holy Lord, giver of light. Darkness dwells within us. We have sinned against you and one another. Save us, Lord, shine your loving light and purify our hearts. Through Jesus Christ, the light of the world. Amen. Jesus Christ has come to shine his perfect light in your lives. By his great love, he has given himself for you on the cross and has destroyed darkness. By the light of his resurrection, your sins are washed out. You are forgiven. Amen. You may be seated.
my voice I cry out to the Lord. With my voice I plead for mercy to the Lord. I pour out my complaint before him. I tell my trouble before him. When my spirit faints within me, you know my way. In the path where I walk, they have been a trap for me. Look to the right and see. There is none who takes notice of me. No refuge remains to me. No one cares for my soul. I cry to you, O Lord. I say you are my refuge, my portion of the land of the living. Attend to my cry. For I am not very long. Deliver me from my persecutors. For they are too strong for me. Bring me out of prison. That I may give thanks to your name. The righteous will surround me. For you will be well bound to me. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, it is now, and will be forever. Amen. The epistle for today is taken from Ephesians, the fifth chapter. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light, for the fruit of the light consists of all goodness, righteousness, and truth. And find out what pleases the Lord. Have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. It is shameful even to mention what the disobedient do in secret. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible. And everything that is illuminated becomes a light. That is why it is said, Wake up, sleeper, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's honor the Lord Jesus by standing to hear his word in the Gospel of John, the ninth chapter. I'll be preaching on this text this morning. As he went along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Neither this man nor his parents sinned, said Jesus, but this happened so that the works of God might be displayed in him. As long as it is day, we must do the works of him who sent me. Night is coming when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. After saying this, he spit on the ground and made some mud with the saliva and put it on the man's eyes. Go, he told him, wash in the pool of Siloam, which means sent. So the man went and washed and came home seeing. They brought to the Pharisees the man who had been blind. Now the day on which Jesus had made the mud and opened the man's eyes was a Sabbath. Therefore the Pharisees also asked him how he had received his sight. He put mud on my eyes, the man replied, and I washed, and now I see. Some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God, for he does not keep the Sabbath. But others asked, how can a sinner perform such signs? So they were divided. Then they turned again to the blind man. What have, what have you to say about him? It was your eyes he opened. The man replied, he is a prophet. To this they replied, you are steeped in sin at birth. How dare you lecture us? And they threw him out. Jesus heard that they had thrown him out. And when he found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? Who is he, sir? The man asked. Tell me so that I may believe in him. Jesus said, You have now seen him. In fact, he is the one speaking with you. The man said, Lord, I believe. And he worshipped him. Jesus said, For judgment I have come into the world, so that the blind will see, and those who see will become blind. This is the gospel of the Lord. Let's confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. Suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He ascended into hell. And the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sits at the right. 
right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence you will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. So, I would like to have the kids come up, but now I want you to try something, okay? This is going to be doing this, this is spur, wait, wait a second, wait a second, okay, stop right there, no, that's okay, okay. When you get up to a certain spot, I want you to close your eyes and walk so that, like you were blind. I'll be very really careful, be very careful. Come on up, here. come on, come on up, you guys, come on up. When you get closer... Okay, come here. Follow my voice, Charlie. Follow my voice. You're peeking. Okay, close your eyes now. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. Don't fall. Whoa! All right. Today we're going to talk about the man that was born blind. Do you know what the word blind means? Do you know what it means? Yeah, what do you You can't see. Close your eyes once. What would that be like? Just close your eyes. What would it be like? How would your life, would your life be easy if you couldn't see? Anybody? Go ahead and open your eyes now. Would your life be easy if you could see? No, no it would be hard. What would be hard about being blind? Just walking, right? How do you get from one place to the other? Today we're going to hear a story about a man that was born blind, but Jesus healed him. And we're going to learn how great a God we have that he even heals the blind and he even loves us. So as you listen to today's sermon, I want you to listen to the how much God loves you. Can you pray with me? Dear Jesus, thank you for being an awesome God. Amen. Thanks so much for coming up. Don't go blind back. Keep your eyes open, though, okay? <laughs> Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
Thanks for today's message. As you heard, is a is a Jesus healing the blind beggar, which we've just heard a little bit, a little bit ago. Wow. How God can change a person's life is an amazing thing to think about. The man born blind. I mean, these were the days where we didn't have a social net, safety net. We didn't have social security and government programs to, that you could send your kids to special schools and get special tutors. He was blind from birth and it marked him forever. I mean, he had, if he was lucky or fortunate, he was born in a family that had some money so that they could at least care for him and give him a place to stay. What is he going to do? There's maybe some things he could do, but in those days, you know, it was, it was pretty utilitarian and you had to work and you had to be able to see. And he, he probably did a little begging. If he was fortunate, he maybe had some family that he could stay with. And it was so entrenched that when Jesus and the disciples walked by him, they had this conversation about this man. They asked him, it says, did he or did his mom and dad sin that he was born blind? Could you imagine having to live with that? That it's not bad enough that you can't see, but as you're always in the back of your mind wondering, did I do something? Or what did my parents do that I can't see? I mean, and it, this was an off the cuff. It wasn't a cruel question. This is what they thought. And they were asking Jesus a legitimate theological question. I mean, in the midst of this man's suffering, the only thing they, they thought about the, the theology of it. Well, what is the whole problem? with? No, this man is hurting, and you're talking about the, his, the issues that he has in his life, it, whether it's, if it's a sin or not. This man needs help. And Jesus did something extraordinary. And I always think it's interesting that how Jesus does things. He always uses things to make his point. Um, in baptism, we say in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, what do we use with that in baptism? Water. In the Lord's Supper, we receive Christ's body and blood in with and under what? Bread and wine. Yeah. So he's always using things to, to deliver his message. Today, he spits on the ground, gets a little mud, and this is how I always saw it. I didn't rub it on his eyeballs, but I rubbed it here, like this, like, well, I don't know, mascara or whatever, eyeliner or whatever. He put that on him like this. And then he said, go to the pool of Siloam and wash it, wash it out, wash your eyes, and flip the page. What's really interesting about this, can you imagine... Think about that first time. You're born blind. You never, ever, ever could see. You. Not once in your entire life. And you wash, and he's, you, he's washing this mud, spit covered, you know, so off of his eyes. And he opens it, and he can see. I wonder what he felt like that time that he could see. That had to be an amazing thing. Have you ever watched these videos? off of YouTube or on Facebook where they put, where they have kids or people with cochlear ear implants so that they can hear for the first time. Or have they seen these babies when they put glasses, they've never been able to see their, their parents and they, because it's, their eyesight was so bad, but now as babies, they put glasses on them. You ever see the expression of people who can hear and see for the first time? What happens to them? A lot of times they cry because it's just amazing. It's an amazing thing to never, ever hear something to all of a sudden they hear the click and, and their eyes go like this. Or when they can see, the little baby can see and they're crying because they're putting on the glass and all of a sudden they see mom. That's an amazing thing. Could you imagine what it would be like for this man who was born blind to be able to see again? An amazing thing. How did he feel? Well, how did it change his life? Think about that. All of a sudden, he could do stuff. He could interact. He could see. He could walk to places that he never knew how to get to before. He could work for a living. He could, he could live. He didn't have to beg. There was a new purpose in his life. 
His life was totally open to him for the first time, and I think that's an amazing thing. We have such an amazing God who does awesome things for us, like healing the man that was born blind. Flip the page. Can someone turn out the light? Number one. I have some blind spots. I bet you do too. <laughs> you know, I can look at you and I can, you can come to my office and I can, I can really help you. You know, if you, have, if you have some issue, I will listen and I would have some sage Christian advice. But in the meantime, I'm oblivious to my own problems. You ever gone through that? It's like, you know, I, you, you just don't, you, you see the speck in someone else's eye, but not the log in your own eye. Or on the other hand, all we think of ourselves as just a poor, miserable creature that God doesn't like, that God doesn't care, that we seem to think that God is distant from us. Yet we don't know how, see how much he loves us. And we don't always see what everybody else is going through. When someone gets mad at us or someone snaps at us or we have a disagreement, we don't know what's going on in their life that caused them to be that way. We don't know all those things that goes on in a person's life that we may have no idea what they're going through. Like if, if with some of our people who, have, who, who are all by themselves, they go home alone. Or they're, they're suffering with some sickness or some economic tragedy that we don't know about. They go home. Some teenagers, they think, I don't know if God loves me. I, I don't have any friends at school. And they go home and we don't know what's always going on. So we have a lot of blindness to what's going on in our own lives. And then just like those disciples who could just walk by the blind beggar and talk about his sin, we, we're kind of blind to the plight of others in our lives. And I don't think that's what God wants, how God wants us to live. He wants us to be real with ourselves and our, honest in our relationship with God and also to be, be able to care for others and not just think of them just as abstractions. Flip the page Being blind makes life tough. I can go through life thinking I'm not worth anything. That no one loves and cares for me. It's a lot of people feel that way. A lot of young people feel that way because they don't have a lot of hope anymore. Because they don't have Christ. They don't have that. And we, a lot of people go through that. And that makes life really tough. We don't feel very good about ourselves. We don't feel that we have anything to contribute. On the other hand, life can make, be tough because we get ourselves into the same problem again, again, and again. We fall into the same sin again and again and again. And we can't seem to get out of it. And it really hurts us. It makes life tough. And sometimes we get so wrapped up within ourselves that we don't see what's going on with people around us. And we don't even show care and concern for them because we're so wrapped up within ourselves. That's kind of our biggest problem in the world today, isn't it? We're so, we have it so good, we get wrapped up within ourselves that we're not looking at what everybody else is going through. I want to share with you a Bible verse that I think you should highlight. And it's in our gospel today. Read it with me. Jesus said, as long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. That's from John chapter 5, or 9 verses 5. That's Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. That's right in the gospel. I am the light of the world. Jesus healed the man born blind. He went from darkness to light. Jesus takes away all of our sins. He washes them. They're like the dirt that's on our eyes. And as we wash them away, they are gone forever. You are forgiven. God is on your side. Your life is changed now because of Jesus Christ. He is the light of the world. He is the light of our world. Flip the page. You know, before we go on with here, there is a great song, and I, I was telling Nadine that we should have sang that today because it really fits of what Jesus has done. You can come in with me when you, hear, when you, when you remember it. Amazing grace, 
how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found. was blind, but now I see. That's what Jesus has done for us. He's changed our lives forever by his grace, by his forgiveness. Our life will never be the same because of what Christ has done for us. And now this is another great Bible verse that I really want you to highlight in your Bibles. Please, if you get a chance, I know it's always a forget, but bring them along. We want to get in the habit of doing that. But let, you can just take a picture of it for now and highlight this because this is a great verse to remember. Read it with me. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light. The power of the gospel changes our lives forever. We have certain attributes in our life because of what God has done for us in his son, Jesus Christ. Number one, we have what? Hope. The world, more than anything, needs hope. Amen? Amen. You, you think about what's going on in the world, not only in our schools, but in our institutions, in our families, in our communities. The one thing people are looking for is something to hang on to, some hope. And we have that in Jesus Christ. He changes our lives forever. We are not in darkness anymore. All of our sins are washed away. And in Christ, we have new life. So we have hope. And that's the hope now that gives us the next thing. We have what? We have purpose. With the hope that we have in Jesus Christ now, we can live out our lives to the glory of God. Whether that means me as a widower or as a husband, as a wife, as a cancer survivor, as a laborer in the field, as a rich person, as a poor person, as a, as a kid in school, no matter where we are in life, we can get, have purpose. Our purpose is to let his love and his light shine through the world so that others can see it. The biggest thing that we can do to change the world is to let the love of God shine in our life through our words, and through our actions. I don't know, maybe just by handing a little business card, inviting someone to Easter Church or to one of those uh, sermon series, that might be someone's life changer. If you think about that. That one little thing, because it isn't just Pastor Meyer up here. When we speak the word of God, we speak the gospel, the Holy Spirit, the Bible says, no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. And he works through that. And so as we live out our life, wherever we are, to the glory of God, we have purpose. How we treat our children, our family, our neighbors, our friends, and how we let his love shine, that is the game changer. Just like the blind man, his life was changed forever. He had purpose in his life. Now, we have that same purpose because we have hope. And because we have hope, we have purpose. And finally... Say it with me. Yes, Missouri Synod Lutherans, you can have a little joy. You know, it's really interesting. When I talk to people and they say, well, what, what church are you pastoring? I said, I'm Missouri Synod Lutheran. And then I go, but I'm happy, Missouri. And everybody understands what that means, right? And it's like, I don't get why we're all, all of a sudden seeing crabby. Well, we're, yeah, we're, we believe in some certain doctrines. And maybe that's what kills us is, is we, we look at the doctrine so much that we don't apply that doctrine to a human being, to a people who needs his love. And that life is really messy to get people from here to here. All that stuff in the middle is kind of rocky road. Have a little joy. Your sins are forgiven. God has flipped the light on our life. We have hope. We have purpose. We know that God is for us. And that's all I got for today. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's take our offering, please, and sing our next hymn. Also, sign our guest, uh, our record of fellowship, if you could. And if you want to be on our mailing list, um, we have a weekly one that goes out. You can just leave us your email address, and we'd be happy to put you on it. Oh.
my vision, O Lord of my heart. Not be all else to me save that Thou art. Thou my best thought by day or by night, waking or sleeping, Thy presence my light. Be Thou my wisdom, true word I ever with thee and thou with me Lord thou my great father and I thy true son thou in me dwelling and I with thee one which is a he not nor man empty praise now and always, Thou and Thou only, first in my heart, my King of heaven, my treasure Thou art. My King of heaven, my victory won, may I reach heaven's joys, O bright and sun. Heart of my own heart, whatever befall, still be my vision, O ruler of all. Please rise for prayer. Lord God, Heavenly Father, you have changed our lives forever by your grace. You are an awesome God. You have brought light into our dark world. Lord, teach us to let your love and your light shine to others. Lord, let us not look at people merely as just uh, things to talk about, but people to serve and the people to love and the people to share your love with them. Lord, we especially lift up before you Caleb and Mimi and Ricky and all those people who are going through difficult times in their lives, Lord. We pray that according to your good and gracious will, you would bring them healing, that most of all, Lord, that you would be with them, that they might find hope in you. Lord, we pray for all those of our friends, neighbors, and our family who are living in blindness, in darkness. Lord, we pray that you would give us purpose to bring that love, that light into their lives that they may see and have hope in you. And all these things, Lord, we bring to you, praying the prayer you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And we will not temptation, but deliver us from evil. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. you. may be seated.
Now this true body and true blood of your Lord and Savior evermore strengthen and preserve you steadfast in a true faith and a life everlasting. God's peace be with you. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Let's sing our last hymn. before we're going to have a really short voters meeting and it's going to start about 10 15 so just we have time to relax if you gotta if you're gonna have coffee or and snacks we got some up here we got some downstairs and it'll literally take three minutes and because we just kind of well, you know you know the drill and then we're going to do our bible class on baptism and uh, we're going to have to be done by 10 45 because I got to get going because it's my mother-in-law's 88th birthday party today. So we got to go. 
yeah. down to the cities and see her. So, boy, I sure love that. Nadine has to, she has to, we have to drive separately because she stays down and works in Burnsville overnight. She stays there. So I got to drive back all by myself. I don't like that. That's a bummer. You feel bad for me. <laughs> Quit it. Can I go with you? <laughs>